today's tutorial is going to be on making Iron Man faceplate hinges. So what we're going to be needing uh, is obviously a helmet, uh, some servos, pieces of plastic, trash can plastic actually, um, varying in thickness, you either have a, a softer one or a harder one. Um, I would suggest using the harder ones for the bottom hinges, which we'll go over later. Right there, the bottom hinges. Um, and the top ones being a little bit more uh, lighter so they can adjust to uh, the curvature of the helmet. Because uh, if you start something here, it's going to be different when it gets up to the top there. Uh, obviously, fiberglass. Uh, your hardener mixing thing. Wood stick. Uh, respirator, of course and uh, obviously gloves. So we'll go ahead and go over some of the steps on what we need to do. Uh, these are binding screws, and this one has a hole in the bottom of it. Uh, these are the best ones to get. They're kind of small, but if you can build up enough fiberglass on the inside, on the edge here, these work quite well. But I'll go over that later. Um, small screws. Those are the ones I use. Uh, you can optionally do the Servo mounts out of plastic as well. They're a little bit harder to do because you got to fiberglass them in, make sure they stick straight, and uh, drill holes for the servos. And we'll get into that later. But anyway, so that's pretty much about it for there. Uh, we'll be back in a second to show you the setup for the bottom part of the hinges that go from here to here. Actually, more like up to here. All right, so we're back. Um, here's a helmet that's already been fully done. It's already got the hinges set up and do it. Uh, as you can see, once again, the setup is pretty simple. It's the bottom hinge, and then there's a top hinge. And you can kind of see how I, I mount the hinge arms onto the servo. Basically, it's your servo arm, and then a, uh, I use a paper clip and I bend it into a U shape. So it's, you know, a U shape. And then uh, stick it through the holes um, inside the servo arm. And then bend the ends over. Let me see if I can get a little closer view on that. Um, you can see the ends are bent over. Basically, that holds it in place. Um, and it allows you enough slack to kind of move back and forth um, without a, a whole lot of um, uh, problems. Uh, when you're trying to do manufacturing, uh, it's best to take the AK-47 approach to things and make it sloppy. And it'll work every time. As opposed to trying to make it extremely um, precise and then having the thing jam or, or, or do some weird things. So, um, as you can see, it closes smoothly. The edges are nice. Um, and it'll go back up again. Let's, you know, it's not a problem. So, um, and I've tested these things. I've worn them out uh, with my costume and um, numerous times up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, same repeatable action, always good. Never fluctuates really. Um, and there's a little bit of flex in some of the hinges on the side here. Um, but that's kind of part of what it should be. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you the, the setup on this helmet here. And that is, so far, I've got the bottom hinge in. And when you're doing the bottom hinge, what you're looking for is something that'll clear this gap here. So that and that. You want to make sure that that clears when it goes up. So you can see right there, it clears just barely. So I've already got the, the hinges set in there, uh, or the, the servo mounts. And the way I do those, if you take a look at this one here, is the servos are right about at the edge of, of the, uh, the helmet. So the if you take a look at it, the servo arm where it pivots is right at the edge of this. Because you don't want it sticking out too far and you don't want it too far back. Um, that allows you maximum throw uh, for this top hinge and um, less issues. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the, the layup on this helmet here for the top hinges. And I'll go ahead and show you how that's done. I'm going to go ahead and mount the servos real quick and um, show you how that's done. So as I said, now that we got the bottom hinge in here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the back off this real quick. There you go. Those are held in by magnets. You see on the corner there. Anyways, uh, to continue on, basically what we're doing is we're, um, instead of installing the servos with the arms installed uh, for the first fitting, we're just doing uh, the servo arm uh, with the screw installed into it and then uh, putting it inside the helmet like such. So 
once you get it there, uh, what you're looking to do is get to the, almost to the top of where uh, the face plate is. So what you're looking to get is, is the topmost part of it. Um, and what that'll do is it'll give you further throw in your, in your hinges. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and mark the inside of it with the Sharpie. So if you can get your hole drilled for your edge of your top hinge point in the, uh, there we go, um, in the hinge. And what I'm going to do is basically draw a mark there. Now I've already cut this one, uh, or actually drilled it, so, um, but you want to do that. Basically take the, the felt tip pen, uh, mark it, and then that's your starting point or your drill point for the face plate. So um, as you can see here, I've already drilled it, and I'll show you this in a second. There you go, there's a hole right there. So uh, if you take a screw, it'll actually fit inside there. And the next thing we want to do is we want to test it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the screw with one hand. Awesome. Let's try this again. Screw it in there. And then it'll slide into our little hole here that we've already created. So now we can go ahead and flip this back over and very carefully test the throw on this. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. And as you can see, it clears. Come on, focus. It clears on both the, the bottom side there and the top. And our hinge isn't on there. Um, let me go ahead and, and uh, what I'm going to do next actually is go ahead and unscrew the faceplate. And I'll show you how the screws are, are set up for the um, the inside of this. So I'll be right back. All right, so you can see the inside of the faceplate now, and you can see the hole that I've already drilled right there. And what we're going to do now, uh, and I'll show you this one here, these are actually embedded um, nuts on the inside of this, so they actually thread in to hold the faceplate. Let's see. So they actually screw in. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do with this actually is uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill in the hole there. I'm going to drill it a little bit longer or a little bit deeper and a little bit uh, wider. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a, a drill bit that's the same size as the, the nut that I'm going to embed in there. Small little nut. I'm going to go ahead and embed that. right there so you can see how big much bigger a hole I need to drill and uh, you're looking just to get it flush uh, with the surface of the top of the nut so that, that's the depth of the hole that you want to drill um, and I'll show you that when I'm done with that uh, since I only have one hand to do the camera work plus I'm trying to do work uh, I'll be back so all right so I've went ahead and drilled some holes in the face plate and let me show you how that look turned out now you can see it's pretty much flat or a little bit lower than the actual fiberglass lip that's right here. So, and if you look inside the hole, um, it's got a, another hole in the inside. Now what we're looking to do is uh, get a few threads past the end of the bolt, just so that you have a grip to do to hang on to uh, when you embed it in there. So you, you're not looking to get it straight at the edge of the bolt, but a little bit further in because you want some grab so and eventually we'll we'll take these clean them out um, and then uh, add some Loctite to make sure they all stay tight so and uh, it's here we have the fiberglass that we're gonna lay up that'll go something along the lines of this it'll be one layer on top another layer and then one third final layer on top of that and what I'm gonna do is just uh, carefully poke a hole in the center of each each one of these so I have uh, room to go through with this and when I fiberglass them, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm putting the bolt or the nut down inside there, inside the hole, lay this on top, lay the other one on top, make sure that the holes are aligned on the fiberglass. Because if you try and push this through with the fiberglass still being wet, it'll catch on the end of the uh, fiberglass and rip it out and does all sorts of funny things and you don't want that. So if you poke a little hole on the inside of it, just enough to get the bolt through, uh, 
that should be sufficient enough. So um, I'll try and see if I can do the video on that. It's going to be a little bit hard because I've got to do uh, uh, gloves and respirator and then a, a camera setup, which is fine. I can do that, but it'll it'll take me a little bit of time. So uh, for right now, um, this is where we're at, and I'll be back in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and poke the hole in the fiberglass. What i got here is just a simple, small screwdriver. Um, you're basically just looking to put a hole through this through it like that widen it up a little bit and that's the hole for your, your your bolt and you can kind of fudge it in with a little bit of fiberglass resin and push it around and make sure that it's uh, um, tightly sealed against there so uh, what we're going to go ahead and do next is uh, we're going to go ahead and put uh, going to mix a little bit of fiberglass resin and uh, initially lay it inside the hole here and then layer it on the outside put the bolt in or the nut uh, lay the first one down the second one down uh, the third one down and then at that point um, wet the all the rest of the fiberglass down make sure the screw can go in through the center and then um, we'll wait for it to dry uh, just enough so it's it's not completely tacky but that it's firmed up enough to where you can actually screw the bolt out because if you leave it in there it will actually fiberglass the bolt in so uh, we'll be back in a little bit with some more updates on this one all right so i skipped the steps of showing you how to fiberglass it in but it's pretty simple uh, if you're playing with fiberglass or any sort of resin you kind of already know uh, how to do it um, and i kind of explained how, how i did it uh, but as you can see the bolts are in there now that we have those in there uh, we're going to go ahead and open this thing up and as you can see we've got kind of a gap there uh, in between the top and the, and the bottom. Um, normally that's doable, but the problem is that this is only a quarter of the way up and needs to be more up to here as far as uh, the level position for where this needs to sit. So what I need to do is recreate these hinges because they're hitting at the very top end of here. So I have to take the hinges out and elongate them down along this way and then up around so it's got more reach to reach around and, and throw the back of the ear higher up over. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the face plate. I'll show you on this side the same thing. It's hitting right here. So I'm going to have to make it so the arm comes out straight a little bit more and then up and around so it's going to be even more boomerang kind of shape. So let me go ahead and take the faceplate off, uh, take the hinges off, and I'll go ahead and show you the creation of that. All right, so I've removed the faceplate. I've removed the, the hinges for the top part up here. And we're going to go ahead and recreate the hinges. Now, as you can see here, I've already got um, the old hinge. And, and uh, this is this will be the shape of the new one. Now, if you looked here, uh, this is basically what happened. Is we need to have the same um, same hinge points. So if you look there, there's a black uh, black dot in the center. You can see there. So those are the same. We want to keep these points here and extend the hinge out longer. So as you can see, instead of being that way, it's now actually a little bit further over, which will be good enough. So and this is obviously my favorite template material. That's uh, cardstock and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and recreate this one here and I'll probably cut this one out first and then use that as a template for this side here so they're equal hinges uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and then I'll be back in a little bit all right so we're back I read them the we've done the hinges and let's go ahead and take a look and see how well they are now so when you pull this thing up the back of the ears actually rest pretty close there's still a little bit of a gap here this is doable um, it'll give you a little bit more vision out the front of the, the, the face plate here. So, but overall, both edges are about the same. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of closure issue that I'll have to address, which is right there. Um, and I think it's just this one hinge here. I did have to move the point just down a little bit, so I have to recreate the hinge. But here are the templates that I made. My camera does not want to focus today. Um, here's the template. And uh, there's the other one over there. So these are obviously a lot different. The hinge points are the same, but the, the throw is a little bit different. So and I'll show you one last thing here. So you can see the hinge goes almost straight up now, which allows it to go back further. So instead of being a U shape like it was before, it's more like a V sort of. So. All right, so next is electronics. All right, so for the last portion of the mechanical faceplate setup, we're going to go ahead and talk about servos. 
which is the last kind of mechanical section of the whole thing. Here we have a, once again, a Metal Gear 82 uh, servo, HS by High Tech. As you can see, that's how, come on, focus, 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 focus. All right, that's how the, the pins are created. Um, what I do is I take a, a paper clip, actually, believe it or not, take a pair of pliers, bend it over, and then stick it through the holes that I drill through the bottom of a servo arm. So they basically slide right down. And then you use a pair of pliers between the, the points there and then pry the ends over. It's kind of like a cheap Z clip. So let me go and show you the actual servo that has been mounted. Uh, what we're looking at as far as adjustment is a, somewhere in between the edge of uh, your faceplate there at the top. Right in that general vicinity is where we're looking to get the, the, the stopping point at the end of your, your throw for the servo. And if you look here, I had the servo arm a little bit higher because there's a mark there. And this one's one tooth off. So usually w when you're trying to do that, a, a tooth or two can make a huge difference in, in spacing. So you kind of want to mark, make sure you're in the right position, go from there. So we have a full 180 throw now from top to bottom, bottom to top. And we're going to go ahead and mount the other one as well. Um, right now, currently, this one uh, needs to be adjusted because the arm, if you pop it in there real quick, and you swing it down, it actually stops right about there. So I need to readjust that. That'll be the last portion of that. Um, next up is electronics. So I'll be doing the soldering of the board and a whole bunch of other stuff to explaining how the Palalu chips go together. Uh, I found a new Arduino board that's cheaper than the Palalu chips, and I'll be trying to do a video on those later on. But for now, I'll be doing the Palalu uh, to open and close these, and that'll be coming up soon. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and as always, guys, do your thing. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah.